Shalom everyone, this is Chazak Aliyahu Yasharal here and today we are going to look at why we must flee from the midst of Babylon. It is not an option, it is a must. Okay, so we know that we have been um, conditioned to think that fleeing from the midst of Babylon is an option. We were told in Revelation 18.4, come out of her, my people. And the general thinking that I got, that we got, we used to preach that come out of her means coming out of her religion, coming out of Christianity. And that's what we used to use it to mean. But if you go and examine Revelation 18, you will realize that Revelation 18 is actually about Babylon being manifested as traders, merchants. Okay? It refers to Babylon not as a religious system only, but a general system of merchandising. And if we go to Matthew 4, verses 8 to 9, when Satan tried to tempt the Messiah, what did he do? He said, oh, I will give you all these kingdoms if you bow down and worship me. Point being, Babylon is a system of worship that is associated with the kingdoms of this world, with materialism. So you will get if you bow down and worship. So it's not worship only. So when it says free from the midst of Babylon, it's actually telling you to actually leave Babylon. We're going to show that today, how critical it is, because we did a video previously, flee from the midst of Babylon. What does this mean for us today? And we kind of did not bring out this revelation, because this revelation is very critical, because you have people, many, most believers today, most believers, almost all believers today, are confidently sitting in Babylon, thinking that the Most High is going to deliver us while we are in Babylon. Oh, he can deliver us from our enemies. He can deliver us. We're going to show that that is not what the scripture says. The scripture is actually saying that for you to be delivered, you have to come out. So we have people saying, oh, where do I go? Where can I go? What do I do? If you put out the effort, the same way you can have confidence that the Most High will deliver you sitting here, it is the same way you can put out the effort in order to put your trust in the Most High to lead you where you should go out of the midst of Babylon. So a whole lot of our people are sitting, awaiting the destruction of Babylon and not knowing what is coming. It's very, very serious. And this is why we are asking you to please share this video and please highlight it. Please make mention to a friend, ask him to take a look at this video. All right, because what will be revealed in this is what most people have not yet awakened to. All right, so let's go. First, we have to take a look at what Babylon actually is today. Because back in the time of the scriptures, Babylon was a nation. It was a nation that was led at that time by King Nebuchadnezzar. And today, Babylon is not a nation, but Babylon is a system. And why is it a system? It is because of the dream that the Most High gave to Daniel. And he told Daniel in Daniel 2, 32 to 33, this dream laid the foundation of the Most High telling us what Babylon will be in the end. Daniel 2, 32, the dream that Nebuchadnezzar got was a, the, uh, the, the head ahead of gold. Daniel told him the meaning of the gold. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. And then we go down to 37 to 40. So this head would be of gold. And that is why Babylon, this head is Babylon. Let's go to 37. Thou, O king, art a king of kings, for the, the allure of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and esteem. So he is the king of kings. He is the head of all this entire satanic system, Nebuchadnezzar. I mean, Babylon. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the falls of the heaven hath he given into thine hand, and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head 
of gold. So this head of gold, and what does the head refer to? The head refers to um, control, manipulation, deception, thought, um, everything to do with decision making. So that is why the system of Babylon is the head of it all. That is why Babylon pervades the world, because Babylon controls how we think, how, what we believe in, religion, everything to do with our mind, the head that is of gold. And it is the head that leads us. We cannot take any action unless the head is involved, unless the mind is involved. And let's go to verse 38, 39 to 40. And 39, And after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall rule bear rule over all the earth. So it is kingdoms. That those are three kingdoms already. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. So there are four kingdoms. And guess what? If you go to our video, the fourth industrial revolution, why we should, must understand the fourth industrial revolution, I will put the link in the description. And when we understand that we are in the fourth kingdom, we know that we are in the final kingdom. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. So this we also looked at in our video about the fourth industrial revolution, and you should give more understanding as to why it is critical right now, why we know that we are in the end. And speaking about the end, the Mashiach told us in the book of uh, Matityahu 24, 37 to 39, he told us that in the end it will be as in the days of Noah. We want to know that we are in the end because we know, we should know about the mark of the beast, that um, thing that is upon us, and the abomination of desolation, which we are also going to be looking at. We have several videos about the mark of the beast. A lot of people saying, oh, mandates have been taken away. Oh, this is not the mark of the beast. Oh, well, <laughs> you have to know what they have planned, all right? When you understand what they have planned, then you'll understand that MRN, ABCD thing. Yeah, it is the actual mark of the beast, abomination of desolation. And you might say, oh, you said it's the mark of the beast, and why is it the abomination of desolation? That's how the most high works. Um, America is the head of Edom. America is Egypt. America is Babylon. America is Assyria. All in one. That's how the most high works. One thing can encompass several things um, all in one together. All right? So, Matthew 24 Verse 37 to 39. But as in the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And if you don't have any idea that we are in the end time, there are so many things to let us know that we are in the end time. And um, we, we don't want to go into that to make it longer. But we know that we are in the end. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Until the day that Noah entered into the ark. What we're trying to say here and show this, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Whenever the Most High is bringing destruction, He gives us a place to go. That's consistent. So, Noah was warning about the destruction of the flood. Noah did not wait and um, stay with the people during the flood and say, the Most High has given me this powerful ministry, so he will deliver me from the flood. No, Noah was given a place to flee. And guess what? And knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also this coming of the Son of Man be. So, they are not going to know when the destruction is coming. But the Most High is going to instruct His people as to when they are to leave. And He has done it in Scripture. And that is what we are going to look at today. So, we also want to look at, speaking of Matthew 24, the abomination of desolation. Matthew 24, 15 to 16. 
Um, when the, ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea or Yah Yah Yahuda flee into the mountains. This is the call to flee when you see the abomination of desolation. And notice in the brackets it says, whoso readeth, let him understand understand that means it will not be a simple thing to understand and when you get the understanding now of scriptures telling us first corinthians um 6 verses 19 to 20 first corinthians 3 16 to 17 telling you about your body being the temple and telling us that if we destroy the temple the most High is going to destroy us we know that that abomination of desolation, which desolates the temple, will be something that makes our body bodies desolate. And what can make our bodies more desolate than a gene editing therapy, something that we put in our bodies that alters our, mm, you know what, our D, you know what, N, you know what, A. And that is the abomination that will make us desolate because... They are telling us that they are fusing us with machines. It's at the end what, what the fourth industrial revolution will lead to is a fusion of our physical, our digital and our biological identities. That's the aim of their fourth industrial revolution. That's why it's important to understand the fourth industrial revolution because then you will understand what they aim to do. So when you understand the fourth industrial revolution, you will know the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is something that they are going to put in us to fuse us with their machines and to edit our genes. It's very simple. And they will not stop doing it. Not because they have taken a recess. Does that mean they will stop the plans that they have and they have told us the plans that they have, it will never stop. All right? So until they get what they want. So this abomination of desolation, it says, when you see the abomination of desolation, flee to the mountains. The abomination of desolation is upon us. It's time to flee to the mountains. These people will not stay in the place where the destruction is. No, the end time destruction of Babylon. We're just giving a perspective of what we should do in the end time. All right. Revelation 16, 19. Very important that we understand these things because we have been deceived through lack of knowledge. And we're going to use precept upon precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little, to show what the Most High expects, expects us to do in the end. Revelation 16, 19, And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before Alua to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. So, in the end time, this is speaking about in the end time, around the mark of the, after the mark of the beast, this is what's going to come, come upon this, this earth. He is going to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And when his wrath is poured out, he does not selectively pour out on some. He pours it out on everyone who is in that location. That's how it's always been in scripture. And he always tells his people to flee from the wrath of Yahuwah. Flee from his fierce wrath. All right. So another more very, very powerful reason why we must flee from Babylon is in Isaiah 13, 19, as in the time of Sodom and Gomorrah. Isaiah 30, 19. And we're going to see it saying the same thing in the book of Jeremiah. And Babylon, the splendor of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees, excellency, shall be as when Alua overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. We're going to go back to Sodom and Gomorrah. We're going to go to Sodom and Gomorrah. Babylon. When Babylon is being destroyed in the end, it is going to be as when the Most High destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. And what happened at Sodom and Gomorrah? Think. We're going to look at that soon. We must flee out of the midst of Babylon. It is no choice. It's another thing like, okay, those who can flee will flee. I cannot go. I cannot leave. I cannot go anywhere. Where will I go? What will I do? We must flee. Flee. And there's a reason it has been laid on our hearts here at Just a Word. Because we seek to follow the Most High 
Whatever he says we will do, we will do. That's the attitude we have. So we look to him not to find out a rest or a comfort zone. We look to him to find out what must we do. And it is this idea, this whole thinking that has brought us to get this understanding. All right? So let's look. Clear instructions for us to flee Babylon. Clear instruction. In Jeremiah 51, verses 5 to 6. Very clear instruction for us in this time. He's telling us here that he has not forsaken his people. Not because we have sinned against him. He has not forsaken us. And he's, after giving us that assurance, he's going to give us instructions. For Israel hath not been forsaken, nor Judah of his Alua of Yahuwah Sabaoth, though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Yasharal. Flee out of the midst of Babylon. There we go. The instructions. Flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. So he's saying, if you flee out of the midst of Babylon, that is how you can deliver your soul. So what are we doing in the midst of Babylon? If he told this to us, why are we thinking? Because what we are doing, we are deducing, oh, he's able to save us. Oh, his strong arms, he will save us from the hands of the enemy. This is how he saves us. He gives us instructions to follow. It's always been about obedience with us. When we go out as followers of the way, what do we preach to people? We preach to them, oh, you must obey what the Most High says. Obedience, obedience, obedience. And yet still, he tells us, flee. And we say, okay, he's able to save us. We don't have to flee. No, we got to flee in order to save our souls. This is as the days of Noah. We have to flee. Be not cut off in her iniquity. For this is the time of Yahuwah's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. This verse says volumes. Be not cut off in her iniquity. That means as long as you are in the midst of Babylon, when Babylon is getting sorted out, you are going to get sorted out because you are going to be a judge of partaking in her iniquity. Why? It is a time of Yahuwah's vengeance. And when it says the time of Yahuwah's vengeance, you need to go to Sodom and Gomorrah. When his vengeance came, and we're going to do that, he will render unto her a what? A recompense. He's going to recompense Babylon. So you don't want to be there when he is doing that. These are clear instructions. Flee out of the midst of Babylon. And our previous video showed you what it means to flee out of the midst of Babylon. But what we are doing here is make, showing up the revelation that we must flee. Only those who flee will be safe. Alright. Now, we also showed in the last video destruction coming to the coast of Babylon. So, if destruction is coming to the coast of Babylon, you think the destruction is going to come and, co and go around you? That's not how the Most High works. All right? And the reason the Most High is going to destroy Babylon and destroy everyone in it, <laughs> yeah, it is very important that we understand this. It's very important that we understand this. The reason the Most High is going to destroy Babylon and the people in it is that the Most High knows that Babylon is corruption. Remember, it spoke about worshipping the beast, and we said worshipping the beast means looking to the beast for provision, for help, thinking you cannot do without the beast, and all of that. It's the same thing with Babylon. Babylon is corrupt. It's a corrupt system based on corruption of religion, corruption of the corruption of lifestyle, um, the corruption of um, occupations, things you do, how you make money, corruption of everything. It's, it's a total corruption. Now, if you are in this corrupted place and you turn to the Most High, the Most High told you love the world, not the world, neither the things that are in the world. He told us love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. So if you are in this system and thinking that you cannot leave this system, you have to stay in this system, you are going to be a judge that's loving the world. That's it. You are going to be a judge as not wanting to separate yourself from Babylon. Remember Lot's wife. So we have to, we must separate ourselves because it is a division. It's a reason the Most High has given it. He says Babylon is a golden cup in Yahuwah's hand to make the world mad. 
Babylon is a, is, is, is a golden cup. So if you are stuck to Babylon, it means that you have been made mad. And what did the Messiah say in, in Luke 21? He says, make sure, take care that you are not sneered by the drunkenness, the drunkenness of Babylon. <laughs> so you have to watch and be sober. So the drunkenness of Babylon and the cares of this life that comes with Babylon, the most I says, oh, no, no, no. Take yourself away from it. Yes, and, and, and as I'm thinking about that, that verse has been sticking with me and it's very, very important right now that we look at it. Luke 21, 34 to 36. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life and so that they come upon you unawares. What did it say in the time of Noah? They were eating and drinking and building marriage and they did not know until this, um, the flood came upon them. It's the same thing. So if you are in Babylon, you're going to be overcharged with excess because Babylon does teach his excess. And you might be there, oh, I am humble and I don't care about any materialism or everything. But you are in there. If you're not care, if you don't care about materialism, flee. And drunkenness, and this is the drunkenness of Babylon, Babylon being a golden cup in Yahuwah's hand, and cares of this life. Babylon gives you cares of life like nothing. You have to think about this bill, that bill, um, gas bill, light bill, water bill, um, education bill, that the, the cares of this life gets you so caught up, you cannot even deal with the things of the Most High, and so that they come upon the, you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Yes? So you want to separate yourself from them because, because Babylon is a system that pervades throughout the entire earth. So you want to separate yourself. Yes? And it says, Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. And in order to be accounted worthy, you have to be willing to separate yourself. That's just about it. Okay? So, Jeremiah 51, 9 to 10. Now here's a very pivotal verse. Jeremiah 51, 9 to 10. Look at this one now. We looked at them before, but now we're looking at them in a different light with this revelation. Look at it now. We would have healed Babylon, but she's not healed. Forsake her. Forsake her. So if you stay amongst Babylon, it is you that you refuse to forsake her. Forsake her and let us go everyone into his own country. For her judgment reacheth unto heaven and is lifted up even to the skies. And this is also in the book of uh, Hezion. Look at this. We, might, we have to forsake Babylon and go into his own country. For her judgment reacheth unto Shamayim, unto heaven, and is lifted up even to the skies. And we're going to look at another situation again that we spoke of before. When the judgment reached unto heaven. Lifted up to the skies. And what happened? Revelation 18, 4-5. And I heard another voice from Shamayim saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her iniquities. For her sins have reached unto heaven. And Allah hath remembered her iniquities. We're going to look now at another situation when sins reach heaven. Look at this. It says, come out of her. Come out of her. And when it says come out of her, as I said before, we used to speak about religion. But this is not speaking about religion. Look, go further down. Look, go further down. Um, the kings of the earth have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her. And the merchants of the earth shall weep as no man buy the merchandise of gold and silver. It has to do with materialism, people. It's not only religion. All right? So, her sins have reached unto heaven. So, it says, come out of her that ye be not partakers of her sins. If you stay in there, you're going to be partakers of her sins. Because the Most High is going to judge you, everyone that is in Babylon, for the sins of Babylon. And that ye receive not of her plagues. So, the plagues are going to come. If we do not come out of her. So let's look at another situation. In the book of Hap Bereshith. Genesis 18. When the sins reached unto Shamayim. Unto the heaven. Let's see what happened then. Uh, 
Genesis 18, 20. And Yahuwah said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great. Remember, we looked in the book of um, Yeshayahu, Isaiah, and it showed us that Babylon's destruction in the end will be as Sodom and Gomorrah. And we have it here in Revelation and in the book of Jeremiah, when it tells us that when this um, Babylon is destroyed, it's going to be desolate and only for, um, birds, etc. will be there. Okay? Sodom and Gomorrah is great because their sin is very grievous. I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is come unto me. If not, I will know. The cry has come unto the Most High into the heavens that he has to go down send his angels down to see if this is so and to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah so we have to go to Sodom and Gomorrah to see what happened so let's go to Habereshith 19 12 to 13 Genesis 19 12 to 13 this video might be a little longer but this is so important Genesis 19 12 to 13 these are the angels now who will eventually destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, speaking to Lot. And the men said unto Lot, Hast thou there here any besides? Son-in-law, and thy sons, and thy daughters, and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place. Look at this. Bring them out of this place. What do we say? Bring them out of this place. When the place is slated for destruction, you have to come out of this place. Verse 13, for we will destroy this place. Babylon is slated for destruction. So you have to come out of this place in order for not, you not to be destroyed in Babylon. Because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of Alua. Remember, the cry has come up to heaven. And this is what's going to happen. When the cry comes to heaven, the place has to be destroyed. And whomever is in that place is going to be destroyed. Who had sent us to destroy it? And, and we're going to see what happened. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. What did it say in Revelation 18.4? Let's go there. And I heard another voice from Shamayim saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sin, and you receive not of her plagues for her sins have reached unto Shamaim, and Alua hath remembered her iniquities and what did he say here what did he say here arise take thy wife and thy two daughters which are here lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city so if you are in Babylon when destruction comes and you are going to be consumed in the iniquity of the city so Lot was just Lot was righteous but if he stayed in Sodom and Gomorrah, he would have been consumed. We have to leave out of Babylon people, literally, physically leave out of the midst of Babylon. And, and Lot was lingering, verse 16. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters, Yahuwah being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. They pulled him out. They say, stop tarrying, it's time to go. And it came to pass, when they had brought them forth abroad, they, that he said, escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest you be consumed. So, don't stay in all the plain, because in all the plain, that's where the destruction is coming. Remember, we showed Babylon, water. Did we show water? from Bab and Babylon, coming upon Babylon and other cities. Well, we showed it in the last video. All right? Now, Genesis 8, 19, 18. And Lot said unto them, Oh, not so, my master. Behold, now thy servant hath found favor in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life, and I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me, and I die. Now, this is very important here. He says he cannot escape to the mountain. He was given favor. To not flee to the mountain, but to flee to a city where hardly anybody dwelt. Behold, now this city is near to flee to unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. 
And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for the which thou hast spoken. So he will not overthrow the city for the sake of what Lot spoke, because the city had very few people. So when you say flee from the midst of Babylon, that's why we're telling people, go into the fields, go into a remote area, away from the cities, far away from the cities. Verse 22, Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou become thither. Therefore the name of the city was called Zoar. 24 to 26, Then Yahuwah reigned upon Sodom and and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from Yahuwah out of Shamayim. There's a destruction. All right? The righteous came out, destruction, and everybody else who was there. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. Hear this. He overthrew the, those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. That's why we say go to a remote area. But this wife, his wife looked back from behind him and she became a spiller of salt. Looking back, having fond memories of Babylon. That is why the Most High wants us to come out. Yes, that is why he wants us to come out. We have to come out because we have to show total rejection of Babylon. All right? Remember, remember our call is a choice. We have a choice because our choice is whether we love the Most High with all our hearts, minds, and soul, willing to sacrifice everything as the Messiah did, or we are still willing to be double-minded, trying to serve Him in the midst of abomination when He tells us to come out. Yes? So his wife looked back because her mind was on, on, on Sodom and Gomorrah. If our minds are on Babylon, we will not be saved. That's it. Oh boy. From 29 to 30. And it came to pass when Alua destroyed the cities of the plain that Alua remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in the which Lot dwelt. Yes? This is the point. He remembers us. It is because of his mercy that you are hearing this. He remembers us and because he remembers us, he brings to mind all of these things to send us out of the midst of the overthrow that is coming upon Babylon. All right? <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. So, oh boy, oh boy. Jeremiah 51. We, 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 we already looked at um, Jeremiah 51, 5 to 6, flee out of the midst of Babylon. Jeremiah 51, verse 45 another instruction when you look at these instructions we see that there is no other way no other way 51 um, 45 and 50 verse 45 my people go ye out of the midst of her and deliver ye every man his soul from the fierce anger of Yahuwah this verse says it all go out of the midst Leave from the cities, the built-up areas. Go into remote areas where you are not partaking of Babylon because Babylon's system includes their way of life, their whole way of life, everything to do with Babylon. All right? Because they're using their food, and we have a video on food on Just A Word, Just A Word's um, YouTube channel. They are using their food to pollute us. So when, when we leave Babylon and can cultivate and do our own thing, then... We will take ourselves away. Go ye out of the midst of her and deliver ye every man his soul from the fierce anger of Yahuwah. When the fierce anger of Yahuwah is coming, if we are among them, it's going to take us. Our people are wrong for thinking, for saying that the Most High is going to deliver them. It is because you wish to stay and look at our lifestyles when we are among the Babylon. We just want to continue as we are here struggling, we are here struggling to continue in the way of life of Babylon. Until the Most High comes to deliver us. No. He tells us how he's going to deliver us. Come out. And then you will be delivered. Verse 50. Ye that have escaped the sword, go away. Stand not still. Remember Yahuwah afar off. And let Jerusalem come into your mind. <laughs> now, let me read verse 49 first. As Babylon hath caused the slain of Yasharal to fall, so at Babylon shall fall the slain of all the earth. 
Ye that have escaped the sword, go away. Flee from the midst of Babylon, stand not still. Remember Yahuwah afar off, afar off from Babylon. <laughs> yes, and let Yerushalayim come to mind. What does that mean? The kingdom. Think on the kingdom. Think now that we are going to be delivered. Have your mind on Jerusalem. I am leaving Babylon because I am waiting on my deliverance. I will be delivered and I will be taken into the kingdom. Read it. Go and read these, these verses by yourselves. All right? But Zechariah 2, 67, that we read the last time. These verses, when we get this um, understanding, these verses take on a more profound meaning. Ho, ho! Come forth and flee from the land of the north, that is Babylon, saith Yahuwah, for I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heaven, saith Yahuwah. Flee from the land of the north. Flee. Deliver thyself, O Zion, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. Deliver yourself. You deliver yourself by leaving. Save your soul by leaving. You're waiting on the Most High to save you. He already told you, you save your soul. This time, by leaving. Yes? I am the Savior, yes, and my salvation. But this, physically, save your soul, save yourself by fleeing from Babylon. All right? And the final verse is, I think it was the final verse we looked at the last time. We want to cap it all off. The final verse, very profound. Micah 4, 6 to 12. In that day, saith Yahuwah, will I assemble her that halteth, and I will gather her that is driven out, and her that I have afflicted. And I will make her that halted a remnant, and her that was cast afar off a strong nation, and Yahuwah shall reign over them in Mount Zion from henceforth even forever. We're going to show how he assembles them. All right? He's going to assemble us by our actions, starting with our actions rather. It's going to begin with our actions. We have to, and it's all called, it's all emunah, our faith. All right? You have to step out first for him to do the rest with everything. That's what emunah is. You start with a mustard seed, emunah, and then he does the rest. He says, if you have faith small as a mustard seed, then you can say to the mountain, remove, and it will be removed. So it has to begin with you. So this is where it begins. The assembly begins with you deciding that you are rejecting Babylon. Yes? And then you qualify. And I will make her that halted a remnant. And her that was cast afar of a strong nation. And Yahuwah shall reign over them in Mount Zion from henceforth even forever. And thou, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, unto thee shall it come. Even the first dominion, the kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. That's why in the previous verse that we read it says, Bring Jerusalem to mind. The dominion, the first dominion, the kingdom. That is what we should have on our mind when we leave Babylon. Now why dost thou cry out aloud? Is there no king in thee? Is thy counselor perished? For pangs have taken thee as a woman in travail. Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. It says to be in pain. What does it mean? It means that this leaving, fleeing from Babylon might take some dislocation, some discomfort rather, something unpleasant. Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. For now, so he's telling you why you're going to be in pain. Because now shalt thou go forth out of the city. Now you shall leave Babylon's cities. And thou shalt dwell in the field. This is where we should go. Dwell in the field. And thou shalt go even to Babylon. So you shall be in Babylon, for the people who are asking, what does it mean to flee from the midst of Babylon? You're going to be in Babylon, but you're going to leave the cities and dwell in the field. Because it says, there shalt thou be delivered. There Yahuwah shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. So it begins with our action. It's going to be painful, but it says, flee from the midst, go out of the cities, go in the field. You're going to be in Babylon, but it is from there that Yahuwah 
is going to deliver you from the hand of your enemies. So there we go. This is what we're saying, people. It is no choice. Those who will be delivered are those who are going to leave Babylon. Because Babylon is going to be destroyed. Okay, so what if this is in the end time? And what if Babylon is not destroyed? You cannot serve the Most High in Babylon. You cannot serve the righteousness that is required for us to be blameless and spotless when the Messiah returns. It is almost impossible to do it in Babylon. And I can tell you that we, our group here, have uh, uh, just a word, striving in righteousness. We have seen and can tell you it's, uh, it's impossible to serve the Most High in Babylon. Only if we take ourselves away and go back to husbandry, go back to growing crops and tending animals can we find righteousness. That's why the Bible is about people that do husbandry. All, everything is based on husbandry in the, the scriptures. Because that's where righteousness is brought out. Righteousness cannot be brought out in Babylon. Alright? So even if Babylon is not going to be destroyed for righteousness sake. But we know. We're just saying that. But we know that this is a time of Yahuwah's anger. This is a time to come out of her, my people. Flee from the midst of Babylon. If we do not flee from the midst of Babylon, we are going to be in serious, serious trouble in the midst of Babylon. So for our brothers and sisters, even the Hebrew Israelites, I hardly hear anyone speaking about fleeing. Everyone is about putting this confidence in the Most High that he's going to do this. No, he requires us to do something. It's not only turning to him and worshipping. Where is the proof? Where is your sacrifice? He knew that his son had the heart to give up his, his, his um, life for his friends, for his, his, his people. But it had to be proven physically. The offering of the Messiah would not be effective if he had not done it. Physically. So we know that, oh yes, our mind is on the kingdom. Our mind is on the kingdom. Prove it. Prove it by fleeing from the midst of Babylon. Are you willing to leave this? Or are you just wanting to continue living, living in this, going over Babylon's routine? No. Just like in Sodom and Gomorrah, that's when oh, Babylon is going to be destroyed. And when Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed... Everything that was left in it, Lot was righteous and he said, you come out lest you be caught up in her iniquity and be destroyed. So no matter how righteous you are, no matter the relationship you have with the Most High, if you do not flee, if you do not come out of Babylon, you are going to be caught up in her iniquity and you will receive of her plagues. All right, please like this video, share, comment. We'd love your comments on this one, especially. Comment, sus subscribe if you have not yet subscribed. But please share this video with someone, especially those who are believers. Please share it. Let the word go out. Please, we're asking you, share this video. Very critical for our people. All right? So, another of our videos completed, all right? And um, we'll continue to strive to... Put out these videos you know, once every day for a couple of days or whatever regularly shorter videos but this one is a little longer but it is so critical it had to run this long and as you can see the contents you'll understand why all right so until next time shalom